Welcome, my dudes. Today, we're about to shatter all our expectations and stereotypes about the limits of artificial intelligence. And we're about to create a game in Unity that is not only made with AI, but made entirely by AI. That's right, no human intervention, no cheating, no outsourcing to aliens or dolphins, just pure, unadulterated AI power. We will play the role of a project manager, while ChatGPT will be our developer for today, and Midjourney will be the artist. I believe at this point everyone has heard about both of this AI, but in case you did not, I have linked some videos in the description that explain the concept really, really well. Now, you might be wondering, can AI really create a game that's fun, engaging and visually stunning? Who knows, we might just witness the birth of the next Mario or Fortnite, or we might just create a game that's so bad it will make us regret our entire existence. Either way, it's gonna be a wild ride, so buckle up, hit that like and subscribe button and let's get started. First things first, we need a player character and we need it to move. I didn't want to be too edgy here, so I made a circle. <laughs> get it? No edges. <clears throat> Anyways, that will change once we get to generating the art assets, but for now this temporary sprite should suffice. Now, to make a jump we will go to ChatGPT and ask it to generate us some Unity code for a character controller that will make the character jump when we press the space button or we touch the screen. In order to have a smooth jump I wanted to make it physics based, so we will apply a force to the rigid body. And just like that we have a code snippet that does exactly what we requested. Not only that, but it even explains you how to exactly use the script underneath it, resulting in a code much better organized than my entire life. As some of you might figured out already, this code will not work as it is, because we would need to have that rigid body component first attached to the player. But remember? We are project managers, so our entire task today is to do nothing and watch the developers struggle. So let's ask ChatGPT now to also check whether the rigid body component is applied. If it's not, then just add it. And as we can see, it easily updates the previous script with the new functionality. Time to implement all this code in the project and see if it's working. The rigid body component was successfully attached, since the ball was pulled by gravity downwards. However, to test the jumping mechanics, we would need some ground box so that player has something to land on. Once again, just for testing purposes, we will add this square box, which will be our temporary ground. Alright, should be working now. Oops, yeah, uh, I forgot that we don't have any colliders attached to the player, so back to ChatGPT. Similar with the rigid body component, we'll check if it is already there and if it's not, we'll attach it from code. Copy pasting the new snippet and just like that, the player is now able to jump. Um, or fly? Well, the problem is that the code allows us to jump every time we press space or touch the screen, but to avoid flying, we need the jump to only work when the player is touching the ground. Back to our developer and let's ask him just that. And here something quite interesting actually happened. For those of you who are not aware, I'm now back in my home country, Moldova, and my internet connection here is even less stable than Bitcoin prices. So while ChatGPT tried generating a solution for my request, I guess I ran out of potato bandwidth and it got stuck. The interesting thing, however, is after refreshing the page and regenerating the response, I got a much better solution than the initial one. Instead of suggesting me to check the collision with some overlapping spheres, now it simply used the collision detection methods from Unity, which I believe makes much more sense. Who said that I can't learn, right? This dude is smarter than all my CSGO teammates combined, me included. As we can see, the generated code checks whether we are colliding with the ground by checking the layer name of the collider. So let's ask ChatGPT to make us a script for that ground object, such that it will work with the current stuff we already have. And since we want everything to be made by AI, once again we will check if there is a collider and add it otherwise. Now, you might get a little mad, but I gotta confess. For a few seconds I had to forget that I'm a project manager and actually do some work for this project. Luckily it only took me 5 seconds. Since Unity does not allow you to add new layers from script, I had to quickly do that myself, but I don't think that counts, does it? With all that implemented, everything seems to be working as intended. The player and the ground have physics and colliders, and you cannot jump if you're already in the air. Awesome, but it's time to make this entire game look a little prettier and as mentioned in the beginning, our artist today is Mid Journey AI from Discord. 
I have asked it to generate some characters, like that dinosaur from Google's game, but I wanted it to be a penguin instead, and soon after I got some really nice pixel art results. I was generating the art with Midjourney and cropping it in Photoshop, because when it comes to game design, why settle for stock images when you can have custom-made, poorly drawn characters? Am I right? Oh. I also made this small animation for the penguin in literally 10 seconds by moving the legs and slightly scaling the body. But we won't tell anyone about it, right? Snitches get stitches. Keep that in mind. Midjourney also generated for us these seamless backgrounds and just like that the game already looks better than the dots and squares we had few minutes ago. Back to the gameplay. We need a way to spawn and move obstacles, so I asked ChatGPT to make such a system where we spawn obstacles and move them while the speed keeps increasing further you get. As we can see the generated code does just that, but it requires another class called Obstacle Mover in order to function. So after generating the Obstacle Mover script and copying all of that into the project, I created a simple obstacle prefab to which I applied that script component. I added a temporary sprite and just like that our obstacles are working. Yeah, we gotta reposition the spawner, but the mechanics are working. ChatGPT even knew that we should destroy the obstacles and not just let them move. Pretty cool. Back to our artist mid-journey, which quickly generated a much better looking obstacle, but now we need the penguin to die when it hits it, because in this game failure is not an option, it's mandatory. And my internet broke again. Alright, we got a end game script, but the collision function needs the character to have the player tag attached. So, as previously done, we will ask ChatGPT to check whether the tag already exists on our player and assign it otherwise. Once that was done, I made quickly this button, but we need a way to reference it from the code, as well as some colliders on the obstacles. So, after some back and forth with our developer, I got it to work. Great. Next, I asked ChatGPT to make it so the obstacles are spawned with different heights, you know, to add a little more diversity, just like any Netflix series. And also made the button actually work. With that working, there was only one request left for ChatGPT, and that was to make a score system that gets incremented with time and changes a text value on the screen. However, the AI made a small mistake, or I guess you could say I didn't explain everything properly, since the score kept increasing even after the game was over. Luckily that was an easy fix for our AI friend, it just sets the time scale to zero when you lose the game and brings it back to one when you restart it. I've spent a whole two minutes playing with post-processing effects in an attempt to make that look nicer and ta-da! Just like that, the game is ready! We have a game that was entirely made by an AI team. The future is now old, man. Of course it wasn't ideal. There have been some small mistakes here and there that I had to fix. For example, it would try to reference a class named Obstacle instead of the Obstacle Mover. But overall, I am both impressed and terrified by how far AI has gotten. Luckily, for the time the AI revolution will start, I should have my own AI army to fight on my side and help me survive. Thanks for watching, smash that like and subscribe button and see you in the next video. Bye!